Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another great episode of Mom's Pearls, where we answer life's questions from a biblical perspective. I am your host today, Brenda, and I am here with my lovely co-hosts, Leah and Yolanda. We are all moms, and we are sisters in Christ. So ladies, 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 fam, today we're going to go into part two of why we get married. Girls, do we get married for love or do we get married for the love of the money? Listen, we're going to talk about it, discuss it, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mom's So, we're going to start off with a recap from last week's show, okay? So, last week, we talked about how marriages and businesses actually do have similar properties. They can both be mergers, two people, or two businesses. We also talked about how they would involve finding out about as much information as possible about the other before they come. Businesses want to know about the other businesses. If you're getting married, you want to know about the person that you're about to be married <laughs> to, right? <laughs> so they are both actual, actually contractual. So even if it's a contract signature in most businesses, or if it's an I do, like it is when you get married, right? It's still a contract that we're talking about. We also, however, discussed the differences between them last week, okay, family? <laughs> so we talked about how marriage is a vow to be entered into forever in the sight of God. It involves giving all of oneself, but businesses, however, can be given to in proportion to the stated goal, okay? Businesses are about the bottom line of what? Profit, making that money. And they can be dissolved at the will of either partner. You don't like it, I don't like it. We be out. And technically, we've seen some marriages like that too. Okay. Yes. We'll, 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 we'll move on. All right. So, marriage is also for our companionship, procreation, love, and it involves provision as well, some sort of money most of the time, yes. but they still have totally different outcomes. So we acknowledge that how and why we come together still has major and varying impacts upon the world that we live in. So today, family, we are picking up that discussion regarding the impact of marriage in society. Let's go, Yolanda. What we got, girl? All right. So now we have two people, two parties that are interested in getting married. We're going to discuss some things. What is the motivation for your marriage? And that motivation will affect how we close the deal. So the negotiation part is when we come to the table, both parties are aware of what each other wants. We, I know what you want coming in and, I, and you know what I want. Back to what we discussed in our first session, talk, have these conversations beforehand so you don't get into it like, oh, well, I didn't know you wanted kids. Yes, have that conversation. <laughs> we need to have that conversation before we we get to the altar and say I do. So, um what are we offering is your business what are we limited to? What are what are our our limits in this marriage? What's our our bottom line? What's our breaking point? What's our no go from here? Have the conversation. And so, what's an expected impact? What's in marriage we have to have an equal partnership. That doesn't mean it's going to be 50-50 the whole way throughout. Sometimes one spouse will have to carry 80 and the other will have to carry 20, but it's an equal partnership because we are both bringing our all to the table. And if at one point your all is 20%, then that's what you give. You don't hold it back and say, well, if I can't give all of it, I'm not giving any of it. We are bringing, don't be petty. We are bringing our all <laughs> to the table. You don't want someone who doesn't pull their weight in the marriage. You don't, you're not going to go into a business and to a contract with somebody who's not going to pull their weight at the table. Everybody has been this, had this experience with the group project in school. There's always at least one person 
who's not doing what they're supposed to do, who's not holding up their end of the bargain. And we're going to the teacher, to the professor and say, hey, um, their name should not be on this project because they did not submit anything. I want those points because I did that extra credit. We, You should split those points up amongst the other three of us because that person did nothing. I, we had to have those conversations. You don't want to be that person left out on getting credit. You want to bring it to the table, bring to the table and do what it is we said we were going to do. Fully a partner that completes you, okay? So we come into the table with our shared goals in mind. All right, ladies, I'm, Leah, you look like you're ready to jump in. Go for it. I love that because I think at the end of the day, you know, um, in order to know what that weight is, to know if I'm carrying my weight, we have to have had that discussion. We exactly. have to have talked about what the expectation is when we come into marriage. And I think you can't understate yeah. the amount of communication that you have to have because like we said earlier you know this is a vow we're talking about a lifetime we're talking about when we enter into a solemn promise before god this is the person that i'm planning to be with that i want to spend the rest of my life with so we have to have a lot of integrity in that thing and that means from the beginning before we got to the altar before we got to that moment really having those discussions about what we see you know you mentioned yeah. kids you know how many kids he over there expecting yeah. two and you want 12 you know it's a whole <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on, it's a whole different thing. And those type of things are so impactful because then they make you feel away. Well, I'm ready to have baby number three. And he's looking like, girl, I've been done with you and with all that. So, you know, I'm trying to, right. It's a, it can, and it can be a real situation. We're talking about things that can really, I mean, that's your finances, that's education. You know, you yep. say, well, I'm going to be cute with my bachelor's and then that's all. I'm going to sit and be a housewife somewhere. He's like, oh, I expect you to have a doctorate and a this and this and we about to be writing books and we going to be doing, and you're like, what? Like, so, yes, I mean, I think all of that is so important when you're talking about bringing these marriages together, making sure you yeah. have an equal partner because you want to make sure that you're sharing the same goal, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. And when you're in, because it's technically like those business negotiations beforehand, you know, what am I going to take? What am I not going to take? You're talking about some pros and some cons. Write that stuff down, ladies. We like to write and doodle mm -hmm. and all that. Write it down on paper. Look at it and see if it's really going to be more than I can handle because there's still going to be some things at the end of the day, life's not perfect. That happened in life. There are going to be their own challenges. So you want to make sure that you have already come to it with as much integrity as possible so that when those challenges arise, you still know this is still my person. It's still my <laughs> ride or die. So let me still try to hang in there and, you know, just honor the commitment and deal with the challenges. But you want to have definitely weighed the pros and cons. You want to have definitely voiced your concerns you know, in order to reach a compromise. Marriage in the eyes of God, it's not a 50-50 proposition, you know, at the end of the day. How will we do this? How will we work together? Like she said, sometimes you're carrying 80, sometimes I'm carrying That's 20, true. whatever the case may be, but you have to be willing to be in there. And so that means coming to the table initially with integrity. It's, you got to be willing to compromise. It's going to take a lot of compromise. Things change. Um, your ideas and your values change. You might feel one way when you're first getting married and you might be like, oh yeah, that's good. That's going to work for us. And then as a few years go down the line, things change. Oh, you know what? This is not going to work for us. Oh, we, you know, I thought I wanted this. Now you all want something different. Life, you never know which way it's going to take you. So you have to be open, have conversation. Communication is very, very very important in a marriage. You got to talk to each other. You got to say, okay, well, now we're going to go left and then we're going to come back and then we're going to go right or we might make a U-turn and give it to God because he will guide you through all of it. He will guide you through it and don't do it together. Don't let everybody else tell y'all what to do in the marriage. Yes. Figure yes. it out amongst yourself so yeah okay you take your advice you know as parents we want to give our kids the advice you know but at the end of the day it has to be the decision of the husband and the wife you know because yes. god meant for a husband and wife to be unified and to come together as one and it it, it takes work i'm gonna tell you fam it's not peaches and cream every day you're not gonna be tiptoe with two to two look it's not happening <laughs> it's not, that's just not how it is but like Leah said, you love each other. You love each other, so you won't get through it. Just give it to God, and he'll guide you through the whole way. 
And I yes, love that. Yes. Right before we close and go to our next section, let me just add this scripture. First Peter 3 and 7 says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker mm. vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. So family, that's just for us to understand. We all have a role and a position and an assignment and expectation that comes out of the word of God for each of us to do. Okay, Sister Brenda, go ahead and get us transitioning, girl. It's good. It's good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we're going to talk about this. Fam, what is, is marriage a business or is, is that is affected by racial ethnicity? Mm of the individual in the marriage okay do we make these decisions based on the color of another and what is the impact so do we see more black and white marriages today interracial these it's ladies more based say? marriages for sure yes that's definitely. That's, that's, that's definitely. definitely but i will know in my opinion these ladies tell me what you think i think we have still seen it in one way like more um black men with white women Mm. yes i think it's still more black men with um not just strictly other white races. women but yeah. with um other races but it's also um black women are also on the rise on marrying outside of the race i know we were um it was not it was kind of hush hush some years ago but now everything is more open now so we are seeing more of both but yes and in the military community where i live i see it's it's kind of like you know just a regular thing to see mixed marriages wherever we are in the military community it's more common in the military community i think maybe that's just from my perspective so i won't put that because i haven't done any studies on it so <laughs> i would agree with that though i would definitely agree with that i think yeah. from the military perspective it is just because you're not confined to this one region you know, you mm -hmm. do travel so often and you're in so many places mm -hmm. that you tend to, you know, intermingle constantly and it just becomes a way of life. But I think outside of that, it is it is still typically, um, you know, the black men with the white or other races um, of women. And then, you know, we have been on the come up um, black women with um, other races, but not still not to that um, same degree at all. But yeah, absolutely. So this is the one thing to think about. When you're thinking about going to interracial marriage, mm -hmm. do you think about the effect it will have on your children? I didn't. I um in my early twenties, I was um we weren't was quite right dating. <laughs> we were we were talking about it on the low, right? It was me and a oh and a white guy. And I never considered like what it what that relationship the impact that would have on children i wasn't thinking about kids i was thinking about me getting my happiness and you know we were going that that's what i was thinking about i wasn't thinking about kids but now with what i know now um even with having my kids now with my black husband i think about how that impacts the kids it's just it behooves us to think about it in no and no matter what relationship however our races are going to be to think about how it's going to impact our kids but with the interracial children we should because it definitely impacts them because they could be rejected from both both sides of the race both families and it could i mean it breaks my heart so. not just from people in the world but also from the immediate family mm -hmm. because not everyone is going to accept their child um, marrying somebody outside of their race no you know, there's some parents who are totally against it so they won't accept the the wife or the or the husband and then they don't accept the grandchildren either and it is very very sad because at the end of the day my preference is listen i'm not god god puts together who he wants to put together and he tells us not we are all his children right white yes. black yellow orange green what is the problem if this is who he's putting together and they love each other, if it's for love and it's godly, I, 
who am I to be against it and not accept you and not love you? I'm supposed to love you anyway, even if you're right. my neighbor, my co-worker, you know, I see you in the street, I'm rendering aid, I'm still supposed to love you. So why should I not love you? Because you want to marry my black son. And that's and a think- perfect place for me to throw my scripture in, for my scripture to come in. Colossians 3.11. Colossians, not Corinthians, Colossians 3.11 is New Testament. It says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. So like you were saying, at the, the bottom line basis, as long as Christ is in there, he he's the bottom line. He's in us. He died for all of us. So who are we to reject one for the way we look? They rejected him for who he was and how he helped and how he looked, but he didn't reject us based off of how we look that's real and i think at the end of the day you know when you love that person when you're married for love even in inter relation inter- interracial relationships you'll do what it takes you know at the end of the day that might be some work that might be some reading some studying mm-hmm. some figuring out how to do black girl's hair because you never oh, done it before girl. or figuring out you know <laughs> navigating so that your children have what's best because you love them and what you want is for them to have what's best. Yes, so I yes. think when you decide to do that and, and, and it's for real love, it's like, I want my child to have what's best. So if that means I'm standing there watching your mom cook collard greens or, you know, exactly. we're learning how to, um, you know, yes. do business things at an early age because that's yes. what your culture teaches, then I'm okay with that. You know, yes. so at the end of the day, I think that's so important. And I think too, um, when we look at interracial um relationships as well you know sometimes we have to look at the impact on each other's cultures each other's communities right. you know you have to be willing to accept what all comes with that the different backgrounds and believe me when i say well this is what our son might have to encounter so this is why I'm like you know it doesn't need to be an argument or it doesn't need to be okay well i understand you have differences because those things create you know bigger differences than they do if we were of the same culture or identity or things like that so those are really a lot of things to consider. Yeah, because are yes. you marrying this person because of the income? They have all this money or they have they have all these resources. Connection. Yes, connection. Oh, I can live well. Oh, look at me. Yeah, I'm coming out. They say, he's going to take me out of the hood, girl. You know, <laughs> or men will say, she'll get me indoors. Yes. And I would not exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Cause they'll look at her and she'll put me right in there. You know, there's an actress on this TV show, um, Elementary. Um, this is so what Abbott Elementary. Yeah, yes. Abbott Elementary. And the younger black female on the show just recently found out that she's married to a white man. And she doesn't make it known. She keeps it to herself because she doesn't want to be looked at in a certain way and trying to get into the field. And that's once you marry. If it's out of your race, be proud. Don't hide it. Be proud of it. You know, I I don't hide me. Let everybody know. This is who I married and I'm proud. But on that note, ladies, it was great conversation. Loved it, fam. But now we have to go to the pearl of the week. Hello, viewing family. I'm Sister Vanessa Lloyd, and I'm here to share the pearl of the week with you. I'm super excited about this opportunity. You know, as I was thinking about it, I started thinking about how often we're checking on our diet, our health. Are we healthy? What can we do? You know, I'm trying this new ab diet. I want to do some abs. Could share, could lose a few pounds, right? About this seven day, 10 day diet. Just looking at different alternatives of how to be better, how to be healthier, how to look well. But what I wonder today, family, is when's the last time we had a spiritual checkup? This is a great book. It's about fasting for spiritual breakthrough. You ever thought about, hey, Lord, am I doing the right thing spiritually? Am I on the right track? It's something to remember and to question about. But here's the thing. God lets us know exactly how and where we should be spiritually. And I'd like to share this scripture with you from Micah, the sixth chapter and the eighth verse. And it says, he has shown you Oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? Isn't it awesome to be able to know what somebody really requires? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Well, what is he really saying? This is a serious temperature check right here, a spiritual temperature check. And we need to make sure we're on course. He wants us to walk humbly with him. 
He wants us to love mercy and he wants us to do justice. That's doing the right thing. That's not, not participating in racism. That's not participating in how other people treat other people when it's ugly. When it's doing the right thing, you need to be about doing God's business. And so I just encourage you, Micah 6 and 8, let the Lord be your true God. That's a great spiritual check. Have a great week, family. Love you. Oh, I love that, Pearl. Thank yes. you so much. We always learn so much. It's like a little tidbit for the week. So <laughs> yes. it's super awesome to get us started right at the beginning of our week. Okay, Yolanda, because you look like you had something you wanted to say <laughs> really quick before we end it. I'm, I'm going to let you do that and then we'll jump into the next part. So go ahead, girl. Listen, these minutes are flying by. Every The first time you said it was time up, I was like, wait a minute, where's my clock? But anyway, right. it's... It's imperative that we have these conversations before we get married. Talk about what the in, what the impact will be, even with just the two of you coming together. And family out there, if you are in an interracial relationship or interracial marriage, put down some things you have encountered because none of us are in an interracial marriage. So we can only speak from the outside looking in, but we want to be educated on this as well because we have children and we go out into the world and we have to interact with one another. So, you know, we want to extend some grace. You know, we want to learn so we can learn from each other and extend grace to one another and learn if you're going into a different culture, take some time to educate yourself on that culture. Because to ask your spouse, hey, is this something that, you know, that you guys participate in? Or is this tradition something you don't participate in? Because you want to know. Because when you have children, that conversation, we don't want to wait too late to have that conversation. And just, just be aware. Just show love and show grace. And let's just, let's just love one another. <laughs> I love one another. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. See, that was worth the time to me. Okay, all right. So we're going on to our next topic. So now, family, we are talking about non-traditional marriages because we want to cover everything, right? Mm -hmm. Or the business impacts of homosexual or arranged marriages. So we know the world is out there doing everything. Everything is acceptable. But we know from a biblical standpoint, we do not support the homosexual um, marriages. At the end of the day, you know, the ability to procreate and all that stuff. God had a set design for how he wanted marriage, how he still believes um, that marriage should be. So at the end of the day, we know that homosexuality does not fall into that at all. Um, and that's not an area that we support by any means. So let's talk about arranged unions. You know, those are out there as well. You know, people are still putting marriages together that they prefer. So how do you ladies <laughs> feel about that? What do we think that impact is on marriages? Well, that's the man getting, trying to do God's work and leaving, not leaving it up to God. Okay. That is, I don't believe in arranged marriage. No, no. That's, that's, I, I don't believe that. Oh, I, oh, look at your daughter. I want your daughter to marry my son because y'all a great family and I just love y'all and she's so cute and beautiful and pretty so they gonna make nice babies together no that's not my decision that's not my call to make I'm not the one in charge of that and they can both hate each other you put them together they can both hate each other she might not be a good person my son might not be a good person it just they there's no love for each other so what happens He's out there doing what he shouldn't be doing. She's home miserable or she's out there doing what she shouldn't be doing. I don't think that's our call to make. But some cultures, they do that as soon as the children are like one. They're already arranging it. Yes. So I understand the reasoning behind arranged marriages. And just as you were going through that, I was thinking of the movie Coming to America where he needed to come and saw, saw his wild oats or whatever before he married the girl that the family had picked out. And she was just, she said her thing was to only, was to make him happy or something. Yeah, it's serve him. Was yeah. to serve him. Right, Leah, right. <laughs> the royal family. And they, and not only the royal families have done that, like they do do that to keep that, um, to keep a certain uh, the royal, what's the royal word? Blood. Yes, to keep that blood going, to keep a certain prestige, a certain look in the the um the royal family. I was gonna say the castle, but I don't, I don't think a castle. But nonetheless, people do that not only in the royal families, but still in the Middle East, they're still arranging 
marriages. When I was out there for my deployment, um, a guy, he brought his daughter for some medical care to the camp. And we, you know, me and the medical team, we fixed up on her and he offered his daughter to one of the soldiers for fixing up his son. He was like, here, I'll bring my daughter to you. He was like, no, 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 we cannot do that. <laughs> no, he's like, it's okay, it's okay. No, sir, it is not okay. Keep your daughter. That is not what we do. Wow. But I will say my husband and I had considered it. We talked about it. Like, you know, if we did have, if we were in that culture, would we be okay with it? And it depended on the family. We went through the people we knew was like, what about this family? Ah, oh, well, you know, their their mother, their grandmother was kind of like this. And I don't know, they're kind of shaky. What, what What's their belief system? You know, and it was, it was just like, it was kind of on the whim, but we had the conversation and I don't, I don't think we would do it, but I don't think we would be totally against it, but it's just, you know, just something to call, to talk about. It's, it's out there. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent against it. That's what I'm going to say. And that's it. I think it's easier to consider, um, an arranged marriage from a non-biblical perspective. You know, at the end of the day, you're like, I'm okay with arranged marriages, you know, but then when you compare it to God's standards and the fact that, you know, God sees all and knows all, you're like, obviously he's going to be able to give my child much better than I could, you know? So I think that's- But listen, what if I say, you know what? I'm coming to God. Lord, I want you to help me get a mate for my for my child. And I want, I'm going to put this in your hands and I want you to guide me to where- this my child's spouse will be is that's that acceptable where, then that's where it goes awry you want <laughs> god to guide you no 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 you have to pray for god to guide your child to the right circumstance to meet that significant other not you because it's, yeah it's not for you to do absolutely and i think just praying i think praying pray for, your spouse, for your child's spouse future right. spouse i mean that's in my prayers regular like yeah. god you know i got all these <laughs> babies honey i need you to send the right one the first time we don't need no drama we don't need nothing in between it you know i want it to be right but knowing that you can go to god realistically and yeah. say these things you know that's what's most important to me so absolutely honey put it in there every yeah. day pray for them and if you don't like the ones they dating for pray for the one that you know is really i know that was not it god but send the one <laughs> that my baby needs god send them quickly so that they're not distracted for long out there with this food you know <laughs> and still pray for the one that you don't like yeah but uh, still pray for that, 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 one. that they will find the so one that they need <laughs> No, it's 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 a challenge. It's it's really really yeah. a challenge. You know, you, it's, right? It's hard. But it sounds it's, like we all agree that there is not. You know, too. Oh, sometimes, depending on well, the culture, yeah, it's the parents' job. Their like responsibility. In the Middle East, that's their culture. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, Yolanda. What were we saying? Right. I was just saying we agree that there's no foolproof plan for a successful marriage. There's no way, like. Even if your child, if you arrange this marriage for your child, or if your child picks out their spouse and say, this is the one for me, there's still going to be some friction. There's still going to be some things that they're going to question whether they should have gotten married. I I mean, well, I'll say I question why <laughs> in the beginning. Like, why did I do this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, oh, okay. And there's well, still going to be those things. We're going to argue, but just know love, is an important ingredient. We have to love and respect one another, who you choose to be with. Respect that your um, child's spouse and love them and can, and pray for them as well. Don't just pray for your child, pray for their spouse before they get them and continue to pray for their union afterwards. Cause we're godly, we believe in that. We believe in prayer. So don't let it stop at your doorstep. Let it continue on. Ladies, is that time. Once again, Sam, it's that time. Once again, it's been a great, great conversation. It's it's really, really been a good. We're going to remember a call to action. Have the discussion with your future spouse. Talk about these things. Put it on the table. Are you marrying for love or for the love of the money? What is the real reason? It, is it for God or is it for self -being? I have something I want to read and I want to leave y'all with this. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another. Uh, honor one another above yourselves. 
Okay, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Be truthful to yourselves, okay? Love that spouse. Be godly. Let God guide you. We are Mom's Pearls. We will see you next week, every Tuesday. We love you, fam. Have a great day. Bye. Mom's Pearls.